If you're working with only hand tools or you don't have access to a plunge router and you want to make a stopped dado, it can be kind of a challenge. If you have a combination plane like this Stanley, uh, you can try and use it to cut away the groove. But when you start to cut, what you'll find is eventually the skids of the plane will ride on top of the portion of the wood that you're not cutting and you won't be able to make the groove go any deeper. Um, this is one of the drawbacks of these type of dadoing planes or combination planes. What it gives you is a very shallow groove, as you can see here, uh, which is not useful at all. And also, at the ends, past the points where you want the dado to stop, you'll have marks that have been left by the skids of the plane. Now, if you look at my plane, which is an old Stanley, you can see that the skids extend quite a bit in front of the plane iron, and that's what leaves these marks. So that's not very good either, especially if that part of the um, project is going to be seen. So what I do is I take my piece of wood, and I start by marking off the uh, start and end points for the dado, and then I use my uh, special uh, depth ruler that I call it to uh, draw a straight line which would be one side of the dado. Then I take a chisel which is the width of the dado that I want to make. In this case it's uh, six millimeters or one quarter inch and I tap in the start and the end lines of the dado. I then take my special uh, depth ruler again and I set it to the width of the dado and draw the line for the other side so I know where I have to cut. I then take a quarter inch bit and brace and I drill pilot holes, I guess you could call them, at both ends. Once that's done, I take a straight edge, usually a piece of wood that has been uh, plain straight, and I line it up with the edge of the dado that I want to cut. I then fasten it to the bench with a big clamp, and I go and get my azebiki no kugiri, which is a type of Japanese saw. I live in Japan, so I have access to a lot of different types of Japanese saws that you might not get uh, in the States or Europe. Here's a picture of two different sizes. I'm going to use the large one but they're both the same shape. They have curved blades. One side is a rip, the other side is cross-cut. I use the rip blade to cut down approximately to the depth of the dado that I want to make. And uh, then I use a chisel to cut it all out, as you'll see going forward here. I'll speed up the video so that it's not as boring. Uh, the rest is pretty much self-explanatory. If you don't have access to one of these types of saws, uh, it could be kind of challenging. Your only options at this point, if you're going to use only hand tools, are either to manufacture a saw by yourself that has a curved blade, or to do the whole thing with a chisel, um, using the chisel to mark both sides of the dado and then to uh, chisel, it, chisel it out, excuse me, which would be very time consuming and um, wouldn't really recommend it. Obviously, uh, a plunge router is the best way to go in this instance. But I try to use traditional methods as much as possible and am not that concerned about time. Uh, after I chisel out the groove, I use some sandpaper to clean it up, and this is the end product. Uh, I kind of rushed through this so the sides of the data are not as straight as they could be, but I wanted to demonstrate the method, and here it is. Thanks for watching.